Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these young people, Lord God, uh, that are on, their stage, on this stage, Lord God, uh, filling their spiritual selves. Lord God, I thank you um, that this is my last Sunday. Praise God. Uh, but use me, Lord God. Move Derek out of the way. Move me out of the way, Lord God, because the people did not come to hear Derek. They came to hear you. And you do the changing, God. So let your message flow, Lord God, however you choose to do it. I am a willing instrument for you today, Lord God. And I want to say thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to be used. And, and, and I hope that spirit gets into all of us, Father God. That just the opportunity to be used by you is wonderful. It's wonderful. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you for everything that you've done in my life and the things that I've had to go through to get to you a little bit uh, further in my life, Lord God. I bless you today, Lord God, and I thank you for those that have come to sit in the pews, Lord God, to encourage, and those that are online, Lord God, that are, are sitting there, Lord God, hoping for a word from you today. So we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. So let me ask y'all, did any of y'all get pimped this week? Huh? Now you would have to be here last week to know really what that is. So go ahead, let's tell the people, I want to recap what that is. That's, that being pimped is working overtime and not getting paid. Working overtime, not getting paid. So we don't want the devil to be pimping us. At all. Amen. So, pimp, P, pride, wrong arrogance, wrong uh, uh, confidence. And what we are is we get arrogant in the wrong way. We don't include God in our day to day walk. And God wants us to begin to include Him. I, individualism, wrong motives. We come looking for different ways to do stuff to please ourselves and not to please God. M, misinformation. We're misinformed. We think there's another gospel that the, that the cross didn't pay at all. We, we become misinformed when we go through those things. And the P, perception, wrong view. We got the wrong view. The world is looking at us differently because, because we need a little bit of help and we don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world don't think God works. All right. All right. So we have to begin to understand that so we don't want to be what? Yeah. Pimps. Amen. Amen. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. I, I, I said in my prayer, and I, and I mean it wholeheartedly, preaching is a, is a, a curse and a blessing for me. Right. Because what happens, um, I was telling Mr. Bernard, off stage, what happens is I'm blessed every time pastor gives me the opportunity to come before you. But it's a definite look on my life. And because I I preach to me first before I ever preach to y'all, man, there's a range of emotions that go on in your your life while you're getting prepared for this. And it takes you on a topsy-turvy type of situation. And, and, and I'd much rather, Pastor, I'd much rather be out in the parking lot greeting and having fun and welcome you guys. Even if you don't give me a hug, I'm good with that because I'm not out there. I just want to see you feel good when you come in because I know our plates are overflowed with so much stuff on them. I just want to be a part of getting you in and allowing you to really be loose and praise God. That's what I prefer to do. But when I get my opportunity, I'm going to go as hard as I can because I may not get another opportunity. So it's a blessing and a curse. Amen, amen. This has been, uh, I realize in order to get help, I got to admit that I need help. That's the only way that I can get the help that I need. And I need help on a regular basis, period. See, I'm beginning to understand it's like us having a hundred million dollars in our bank account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every day we write bad checks because they bouncing, bouncing 
on us all the time. We got all that money sitting there in our account, but we don't use it properly. We have the Holy Spirit waiting for us to do what we need to do, but we won't access him. We won't let him help us navigate this thing. Man, I've struggled in my life, and I've thought about this over and over, and that's the curse of this thing for me. Living life. Bankruptcy. I waited till the last minute, and God graced me. Helped me get out of that. Didn't lose my home. Didn't lose everything. You know what I'm saying? Went through a divorce. Tried to bring him in on the end. Worst time in my life for a year going through that situation. But God graced me. He graced me through that situation. Trying to figure out how to raise a a nine-year-old when Pam and I got together. Not being a dad. Not knowing how that works. And messed up all along the way. But he He graced me through it all. So I began to get sick and tired of being sick and tired, y'all. That's the thing. I I began to get that way because if I allow the Holy Spirit to be my steering wheel and I just invite him in, he wants to give me regular help all through this thing. And that's what I need. I'm tired of taking, I'm tired of my roads being crooked. I'm tired of taking the long route. When he's sitting there, the money is in the account. He's sitting there waiting for me to invite him into my heart and take control of my life. And when I began, when I began, and it is 20 years, I don't know if I've been doing this thing right. I didn't know how to. But, Pastor, you have a lot to do with that mentoring. I tell you what, I see your life, Doc. And I love your life. I love what you and Pastor Kay have put together for, with each other. And I want to model that. And God is helping me to do that. Amen. Here's, here, here's what I told you guys last week, our, our big idea. Our big idea, if you put that on the screen, our big idea is don't wait until you need help to get help. I'm talking about getting regular help and recognize that we need that help 24-7. Recognize that. It's key. We got to continue to get that help to walk this thing out. It's difficult when we're not receiving regular help. Amen. Tell somebody, I need regular help. No, say it like you mean it now. I need regular help. Amen, because I know I do. Now, there may have been some misconceptions you can put the next slide up on, and I want to make sure that we're clear on the law. It, it may have come across how I was teaching last week that the law was bad and grace was good, and grace is good and it's better. Thank you, sir. But what I want you to know is God has ordained the law. It came from his mouth. So when we look at Romans 7 and 12, so the law is holy and the commandments is holy and righteous and good. The law is good. Having discipline is good. However, it don't save us. The law doesn't save you. We have to understand that. It's okay to be disciplined, but it doesn't save us. The Holy Spirit brings that in and we're able to be, have faith with God and believe who God is and that's what puts us in right standing. Yeah. So really they work together. The law is not bad. It's good. But the spirit and the gospel is better. It fills us so we can get to where we're trying to get to. The law is black and white, rules and regulations. The gospel, the spirit, is color commentary. 
The blood ran freely on the cross. The law is dial-up capability. The spirit is high-speed internet. You hear what I'm talking about? Get you to where you're going when you need to get there. Navigating all this stuff that's down here. So I want us to understand the law isn't bad. It just doesn't save us. And we need both to work this thing out in this life. Amen. So I only have a two-point sermon, and I went long last time. God got into me, and I won't. I'll be very conscious of time. Just a two-point sermon. So you can put that first point on. Be receptive to the little things. Be open. God wants you to know that God is open to the little things in life. And what I've gotten messed up on in my walk is that I always think he just wants to deal with the big things. When I'm getting ready to go to bankruptcy, now bring him in. When I'm getting divorced, now bring him in. I don't do it first. I don't keep him up there. He's receptive over the Lord. He wants to be in every part of your life. Amen? Amen, he wants to be in our life. But what keeps us from him? There's two things. Distance. We're disconnected. Distortion. The channel can't be received properly. Now, what do I mean? Distance. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit hovered on you. Remember that. Christ hadn't come yet. So the Holy Spirit hovered on top of us. So people like Samson, it says the Spirit in Judges 14, it says the, the Spirit powerfully came upon him. When a lion was running to him, he took that lion and broke him apart just like a little baby goat because the Spirit was on him. So it does, allows you to, us to do powerful things. Gideon. The Spirit came upon him for leadership, blowing that trumpet, getting the team lined up, taking 300 to go do the business of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. The Spirit laying on them. Yeah, yeah. What's happening today yeah. with distance is we're not inviting him into our heart. Uh, yeah. He's just hovering. Oh, wow. He's trying to get us a place into a place where we can get regular help. But we haven't invited him in. So the courses that we take are still crooked because we haven't allowed him to come in to make our path straight. That's distance. Distortion. We come to church week after week after week. And we believe in our hearts that we have a relationship with God. You can't tell us any different. But when we get up, we put on our face, we put on our clothes. Those are works. You got to still invite them in. And when you begin to understand that, that coming to church, we're the church. (laughs) So you should have met him before you ever walked in here. You see what I'm saying? We're the church. So when you bring them to church, With you, service is different because you've worshipped him before you even walked in here. But it's distortion why we're not getting regular help. We get that confused. We think doing something is going to bring God in. Doing something, coming to church. That's what the Judaizers was talking about. You understand what I'm saying? The Judaizers were saying, y'all got to get circumcised. Be right with the law first. Then you can have your relationship and God will come in and receive you. No. False. You have to hear the word first. You have to believe that he exists. That puts you alone in right relationship with God. So we have to begin to understand how that works in our everyday life with that. So distance and distortion. 
Satan plays a game on us. He puts guilt. Puts our past. You can't be a good Christian. You're still doing this thing. So we get hardened hearts and we don't let God in. He doesn't penetrate because we haven't invited him. Because we got Satan running the game down here in this world. We got to have the Holy Spirit. This is how... This is how uh, Holy Spirit just places something in your head. You're a scuba diver. All right? You scuba dive. I'll never do that, but you scuba dive. When you go into the water, you got to bring an oxygen tank with you. The oxygen is from this world. And so when you're going into the next world, you need a power source so that you can bleed in that world. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to bring something from this world yeah. into that world so you can operate. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, the Holy Spirit is from another world. Yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And when the Holy Spirit yeah. operates in us, we can operate down here in this world. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we have to understand in this walk. We need him. You must get regular help to navigate down here distance and distortion. Man, I tell you. Commercial break. Parents. Listen to what I just said and how we raise our children. Distance. Our children, the Holy Spirit is hovering over them. They're not in them yet. They're not in them. So they're not in a place where they could get regular help. So they're in, they, what they will do is break the law. They may be liars sometimes. They may steal sometimes. They may hit other kids sometimes. But that's what they do because the Spirit is hovering. It's not in them yet. So I'm not saying you don't bring the law. Sometimes you got to be a professional butt beater. I understand that. You got to pull out the belt. I understand that. Spoil the, uh, 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 spoil the rod or no? No. Spare the rod. I understand that. But what I understand also is that if God would have beat my butt every time I did something, I probably wouldn't be before you today. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Cleaning up rooms and being thankful and opening doors for people, that's human effort. That's the law. Pastor, I'm so happy of what we're going to do as men. I have a son. There are a lot of men's in here, men with a son, or, or even daughters for that matter. We have to take on that mentor relationship. So what God had put, placed in my spirit was, Brighton shouldn't be sleeping in the bed when I go to men's meeting. I got to bring that spiritual component with me, with him. We have to do that discernment. I got to get up in the morning and I got to pray. And I got to say, Lord... Let me see where you're working in his life so that I may join you. Henry Blackaby, right? You say that all the time. It's, it's in my head. I can't do the changing. God does the changing. I just am there for he's on loan for me. And Michelle characterized that thing yesterday at Zachary's funeral. 26 years old, yeah, yeah. they're on loan, yeah. they're on loan. I begin to calculate this thing in my own mind. I'm not, I'm not with Brighton and Gabriel enough in my daily walk with working an eight-hour job, trying to do church things and trying to do my things and everything else. The Holy Spirit has to be with them. So every day when we talk about modeling, I do this every day, period. 
Every day, Pam gets prayed for, Brighton gets prayed for, and me and Gabriel don't have the, the best, best relationship, but I go to his door and I pray there too. I will not walk in. It's not routine for me. Every day I understand you get a brand new mercy. Every day. Every day. We got to bring the spiritual component into this walk with our children. I've been a part of two funerals. Two funerals. Broke my heart. Nine-year-old hung himself in the garage college student died on taking an overdose of pills. I'm not saying anything about the parent. I'm not saying that that's not what the topic of this is. What I'm saying is kids got to develop a go-to. What do they go to when they experience trouble? Nine times out of ten they looking at you, their parent. What do you go to? Is your go to when you get in trouble? Is that uh, Jack Daniels, Tango Ray? What is it? Is that your go to? Because they see what you go to. Is your go to go out and try to get with other women when you're having trouble in your marriage? Is that your go-to? Because whether they see it or not, things come across in their hearing. That's my father's go-to. Well, I'm working on my go-to because it hasn't always been right in my life. But I want them to see that my go-to is getting on my knees and repenting and saying I'm sorry even when I'm wrong. My go-to is my heavenly Father, so that when you have troubles, because trouble going to come. If we walk in this walk, trouble going to come. And if we don't have our oxygen with us while we're going through the trouble, we'll teach them something of how to and what to do when they go through theirs. It makes a difference, guys. It makes a difference in our walk. It makes a difference in our talk. God wants to be in our everyday life. College, high school graduates, if I have any in here today, I want to speak directly to you. The way I found my major in school is my teacher said, look, D, look, Derek, you do well in math, and you just came out of my basic accounting course, and you got a really good grade in there, too. Now, let's go through the classified ads, and let's look. True story. Let's look. CPA, accountant, all these jobs. Become an accountant. Make that your major. What I come before you today is and tell you, Pick God before you pick a major. Pick God before you pick a major. See, God saw you <laughs> at birth, and he's going to see you when it's all over. So I'd rather go to the one that knows where I'm supposed to be than me thinking of what I, where I'm going to be. The 2010 census said 73% of college graduates did not get a job in the uh, major that they were in. And that, that's pretty, that's probably on point. It may be higher now because there's not a whole bunch of gigs out there. Pick God before you pick a major. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> your marriages, your jobs, jobs going to go away. They're going to come and go. We're going to get laid off. Our marriages, sometimes we're going to struggle. Sometimes children are going to be wayward. And what God is 
telling me to tell you and to tell me as a, a person going through the same struggles that you go through. Everything that I try to do, I can't fix them all and may not be able to fix any of them. But if we allow God to work in us <laughs> and work through us, God can begin to fix things that I never could fix. Because <laughs> God says, I'm God, you're not. And so we got to begin to understand who is the boss if you let him run your walk. If you let him run your walk. Last point. Last point. Build your faith. Build your faith. Faith is like a muscle that has to be exercised. We can't just come to faith for the first time, get baptized, and think that's all we got to do in this walk. But we want to get promoted. He's going to take you through something. And we're either going to pass or we're going to fail. We're either going to pass or we're going to fail. And that's what we got to understand. Faith is a stepping stone to get where he wants you to be, not where you want to be. And so we got to understand that when we talk about building faith. We got to have courage. Because sometimes you can't hear him talking. But you got to believe he's there. You got to believe he's there in this walk. We got to have patience. We're always trying to help God. Aren't we? Aren't we? We're always trying to help him out. God says, I don't need your help. I need your trust. I got this on lock. So I don't need your help. Give me your trust, and we'll walk this thing out. We'll walk it out. Dunamis. I like that word, dynamite. He'll give you power. He'll give you power. <laughs> Woo! Come here, B. Come here. Hurry up. Amen, amen, amen. You know what to do? Turn around. Stop looking at me. Okay. Now I want you to fall. Come on, I got you. Come on, you're looking on the stage. I see you looking up there. Fall. Ah. See how he caught himself? That's exactly what we do with God. We don't feel his hands on us. And so we catch ourselves. We catch ourselves. We don't trust him fully. Huh? We don't trust him fully. So we catch ourselves every time God wants to promote us. We get on there and we catch ourselves and we miss out on the blessing that we should have. Because we catch ourselves. Now let me give them a little bit more instruction. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to put your hands over your heart. Both of them. Now I want you to fall. Amen. Go on. God wants us to trust him. I gave him more instruction. That's what this is right here. That's what this is right here. For us to get instruction so that we can build our faith up, not to come here because of rote and routine, but you come here to get something so you can use it when you're going underwater and you can take your oxygen. Take! Somebody talk to me now. <laughs> come on here. Build your faith. Build your faith. Come on, y'all. We got to do that. We can't sit in here week after week not building our faith and going back to a situation that's unchanged. 
We can change the situation. But you got to trust him. You got to let him walk it out with you. And that's where we are. So in closing, 12.04. Donna told me 12.03, I'm a little off. In closing, worship team could come. In closing, if we're going to really be serious about solutions, we got to be serious about getting regular help. See, there's so many things going on in the world today that are not good. And we're trying to help them in our own human spirit. These are spiritual things being done up here, and we bring in carnal weapons to a spiritual fight. God said where two or three are gathered. We got more than two or three, and we get on the same page with one another. God said he'll be in the midst of it, and we'll be able to get to solutions. Right now, today, in the world that we live in today, everybody wants to change their location to get to solution. God is saying, sit right here. Come together. Let me give you regular help. And I can make the changes that are necessary in your life. I'm at a place in my life that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired tired of going through the heartache when I don't have to. I got a big bank account. I just got to write the checks off the wrong, on the right one and not the wrong one. If God has ever done anything for you, understand the gospel message. What I'm going to tell you and I'm done. The message of the cross If it doesn't move you, you're working too hard. If God isn't enough, you're working too hard. He paid the price. He paid the price. And all we got to do is walk in it.